So let's go into our comma key here. Let's go into our project. Let's uh, load up that demo anime head. Let's go ahead and turn off perspective. We'll turn off our floor and we'll turn off our polyframe for now. So now let's say you want to start retopologizing this head. So using what we've learned up to this point, we can start extruding edges. However, we need something to start with. Uh, one really easy thing to start with, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tap X to go out of X symmetry. So we're just working on this one side here. But uh, one easy geometry option to start with is uh, hit B, T, O. That'll bring up your topological brush. Uh, so what you can basically do, basically uh, the topological brush is just kind of drag lines or curves on your surface and you're going to see they're going to connect uh, to the underlying visible surfaces. And this could be multiple things. If you have multiple subtools showing, it'll go ahead and snap to anything that's visible. Uh, then if I want to make topology, I can just drag across these and anywhere these connect will go ahead and give me new polygons. Now if I want to clean this up, I can hold down Alt and that'll kind of clean it up. I can ex continue to extend edges uh, through here like so. Now you've got to be a little careful uh, to make sure those work out okay. If you want to get rid of any of these, just hold down Alt and just drag through them. That'll go through and delete them and then just drag Alt drag out here. We'll just clean up any stragglers that you might have. Now if I have my brush size, which is currently set to 33 right now, and I tap on my mesh, it's going to leave uh, some thickness behind. If I'm just dragging or extruding edges and retopologizing something, I'm going to take my brush size. You can tap S in your keyboard and you can just drag that down to 1 or you can go up here and just drag that down to 1. Now if you tap on the mesh, that's going to leave behind some geometry. It might be a little hard to see. You can go in here to visibility hide point, and that's going to hide anything that was unmasked. Hold down Control Shift. You should be. You might be in select rectangle to make sure that's chosen. Control Shift drag in your document, and now you're going to see that topology that we created. So I'm going to go back up here to my split menu, and I say split hidden. So now we have some topology that we've put on there, and we have our head. So I'm going to take our topology and have that selected. I'm going to go into transparency, but I'm going to turn off ghost. So now you can kind of see those edges a little bit better. And I have my mesh that's going to snap to. Uh, if I go back to my Z modeler brush, B, Z, M, and I hover over an edge, you're going to see we're in extrude edge loop. We've already talked about all these options here, but what I want to focus on now is going from free move to snap to surface. So now what I can do is I drag out an edge. It's going to want to snap to the underlying surface. If I drag this one out, it's going to have that, it's going to snap to the surface and we have uh, Smart Attraction turned on. So with Smart Attraction, that's going to actively try to merge points whenever it gets within like a certain distance. Normal Attraction, the exact same thing, uh, but it's only going to be within a threshold that's determined by the average edge lengths. No Attraction does what you would expect. Although it does say in the documentation, it will try not to merge points uh, unless they're extremely close and then they might. So something to consider. Now one cool thing you can do uh, is if I want to make a triangle over here, uh, you see it's going to want to snap uh, just straight up as I do this. However, if I grab uh, and I pull this over so that this leading edge just kind of goes out into nowhere and I want to take this following uh, vert and snap it here, if you pull it close enough, it'll just turn into a triangle. So if I take this again and I just snap it over here, it'll snap to a triangle. You know, if we pull out this edge here and we do want to do the exact same thing, I can just take that follow that trailing vert and snap it and then you got a nice triangle there and then we can go through here now once you've added triangles if you tap alt once it's probably going to go through it's going to look for a, a single poly loop to pull out and now you're going to see uh, it's not going to catch anything to stop on until it goes all the way around uh, if you tap alt once it's ink single edge tap alt again now you got a partial and then hold down alt and that'll go ahead and give you that full open border now while you're doing this it should be snapping to the surface. Uh, another thing I like to use in conjunction with this sometimes is under geometry, or I'm sorry, under subtool, project. There's project all and project history. Uh, project history is very powerful. We use that a lot. Uh, but I'm going to go in here to project all and uh, that'll ensure that any points that are pulled out do snap to the surface. Now it's already snapping to the surface. So I don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, but just something to keep in mind. So we've set up a Z modeler brush like we talked about before. You can set up multiple Z modeler brushes and assign hotkeys to them. If you want to uh, set up a Z modeler brush that'll be just for retopology, basically what you can do is you can go into your face actions. Uh, and this one, you may want to say do nothing. Like if you don't want to do a face action or you're accidentally touching face and let's say you had it on Q mesh or something and you're trying to grab an edge and you touch a face and then it you know does a Q mesh action, you're like, oh, I didn't want to do that. Hover over face and say do nothing. Uh, for the edge actions for retopology, probably we're going to do an extrude edge loop. We'll say snap to surface. And then for a point action, we can go in here and this is a new to 
2021 as well, we can say move by brush radius. And instead of free move, let's switch it to snap to surface. So now as we go through here and we move these points around, it'll go ahead and snap uh, to the underlying surface. I'm going to make my brush size a little bit bigger. Again, tap S on your keyboard and just drag that up a little bit. Uh, so now as I move these around, it'll go ahead and snap to the underlying surface as well. So you can go through and you can set up a topology brush. You can go very quickly go through here, extrude some edges out, go through and move these edges. And if you don't like or you find it more useful while you're retopologizing, uh, remember you have extrude edge loop. Uh, you can also change these sides. Uh, probably you don't need to change the free angle. Uh, but for here, if you like to work with taper, switch this to taper side. So now as you go through here, you have a little control as you're sliding along the surface to kind of come in a little bit. You can kind of you know come in a little bit and then use the move brush to snap this one over. So you can see you can the move brush too, if you hover over this point, you have move, snap to surface. Now you have a new attraction valance or no attraction. So now as we go through here, we can use this, we can use taper, and we can like snap these. I can move this one out and I can use taper to kind of squeeze this one in. Use move to snap those together. You can kind of fine tune your topology. And again, just to recap, if you missed the other video, uh, now that we've changed the Z modeler brush, let's go ahead and clone it off. So this very last Z modeler brush will have all of these edge actions you like for retopology, all of the point actions you like for retopology, for snapping and attraction and then the face action set to nothing, and then you can go in here to brush, save as, save it in your program files, pixel logic, whatever version, Z startup, brush presets, and then you can assign a hotkey to that when you start up ZBrush. Let's go in here. This will be loaded up automatically. Remember, you can name it whatever you want. You can name it Z topology if you'd like. Hold down Control Alt, tap that, and now you can assign that to, say, Alt K, or whatever you want. And then I go again, standard brush, clay brush, and then I go Alt K. That'll bring in my topology brush and I'm good to go for just doing some quick topology. Now, I like to you know use the topology brush, uh, which you saw, which is BTO, go through here and just very quickly you know, start dragging topology on an underlying surface and then go back down to brush size of one and tap and that'll give you brand new topology. And then I like to have in my custom menu, just do a quick split mass points. So this one's selected, the head is visible, and now I can immediately just start going in here and extruding edges out however I'd like, moving these points, snapping points, you know, all the good stuff that I can do now with the new Z modeler brush. However, you can also, let's go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and delete this out of our scene here. There's another option. Well, there's, you know, there's always multiple options, but there's another one. Uh, you can go through here. We have the head selected. I'm going to go to BI Brush Insert Primitives H. Now, these are primitives that have holes in the back of them. Uh, if you're using Mesh Fusion type functionality, that's also uh, comes in handy. But there's also a single poly in here. So if I choose a single poly and drag that out of my canvas, and then I do again a split mass points. Now we have a, a single poly here. Now you're going to see those verts aren't really connected here. If you wanted to try, I'll show you how to snap verts as you're dragging it off on a surface. This only has four points, so it's not really going to snap that well. Uh, but what can I do now is I can go in here to geometry. I can turn off smooth if I want to keep this nice and sharp, so I can go ahead and divide this once, delete lower, and now I have more points. Or you can keep smooth on, hit divide, and uh, that'll just kind of shrink the overall surface. But if you want to, you can divide and then delete lower, and now you've got more points. To get these onto that surface real quick, I'm going to go in here to project all underneath your subtool here. Uh, it maybe didn't grab all of them. Let's crank that distance up a bit. And now when you hit project all, there we go. Now we have those all projected. There's also another, eh, I'm not going to get into it. You can also use a matchmaker brush, but that gets a little bit much. Just go in here to project all and crank that distance up. So we have this here, and now we can start retopologizing. Go into your Z modeler brush or your topology brush you just made. Hit that hotkey and go through here. And now you can start, you know, doing your edge topology and moving stuff around, uh, snapping to the surface. Now, what may not be so useful with that brush in particular, if we undo out of all that, and, you know, let's go back to this original polyplane and say delete. Um, if we go to the front here, and we're like, okay, I have X symmetry turned on, I want to put a plane right down the middle and start retopologizing from that. You can use topology brush as well. It gets a little bit difficult to go across that midline. So in that case, I might turn off X, go into BTO, just drag real quick, kind of go over that center line a little bit. Again, go back down to draw size of one, say split mass points, do a quick 
deformation mirror, do a mirror and weld, turn on X symmetry, and you're good to go. And that's all in here. You're basically, and I'm going fast, but here's deformation mirror across the X to put it on the negative X axis, and then geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld across the X. This is why I like having custom menus because those are all right next to each other as opposed to me having to go through here and search for them. So now that I have that, I have X symmetry turned on. And then I can just continue retopologizing. So extrude, edge loop, tap Alt once to just extrude single edges here. We still have taper turned on, which, you know, we can always switch that back to like just free sides. And then now we're just free to kind of move these things around, use our move brush, go through here and snap to that underlying surface. Now, speaking of symmetrical, if we go through here and we hover over an edge, you're gonna see we have force symmetrical and don't, don't force symmetrical. And even if we have a point, uh, we have the exact same options here. Essentially what that's going to do, if you have force symmetrical turned on, it's going to make sure that when you're extruding an edge, it's gonna force both sides to be symmetrical on that operation. As well as when you're going down the middle, it's gonna try and keep uh, everything nice and symmetrical, which uh, comes in handy. If you ever break symmetry, again, just geometry modify topology, uh, do a quick mirror and weld across the X and that'll reset up that symmetry. However, if you want, you can also say don't force symmetrical. And then you can see over here, uh, we started with this edge. And as I dragged it up, I snapped to this one. That one didn't snap. Generally speaking, I usually just have force symmetrical turned on. And another thing to keep in mind, uh, maybe it's useful for retopologizing, or maybe it's useful when you're not retopologizing, you're just kind of using edge extrusion is going in here. And we haven't really talked about this in a specific video yet. We, although we've certainly alluded to it while we we're doing the dynamic stuff, is going in here to geometry, dynamic subdivision. You can turn this on. Let's turn smooth subdiv down to zero, but that thickness, we can go ahead and crank that up. So if you were having time, a hard time seeing your edges or you know you're on the backside and you kind of lose them a little bit, instead of going down here to display properties double, you can actually give it some fake thickness just by going in here to dynamic. Now if it's throwing you off, because uh, right now those edges are in the middle, you can see when I go to extrude an edge, I got to go to the middle of that edge and then snap. What you can do is you can use this offset. So if I go in here to offset of 100, the edges are down at the bottom. If we go to negative 100, now the edges are at the top that you can uh, manipulate. And again, if we turn dynamic off, you can see that. So here's 100, so there's the original, negative 100, there's the original, zero. It's gonna split the difference, put it right in the middle. So, you know, whatever's more comfortable for you, you can see a little bit of an edge uh, there like using that fake kind of extrusion mesh, and that might make it a little bit easier to go through and maybe see uh, a little bit easier as you're going through and retopologizing, or if you're not retopologizing, uh, you can either, you can go in here and you can say free move, and then we'll just turn the head off. And now we can go through here and just start extruding edges out. Uh, and we have a little bit of uh, thickness on here so we can see, maybe makes our uh, edge, seeing our edges a little bit easier. Now, if you ever do that and you're like, oh, you know what, I meant to snap those to the surface, always remember, you know, you can switch back and say, hey, snap to surface, but also go back in here to your projectile. You can assign a hotkey to this projectile. Just hold down Control Alt, tap projectile, assign that to like Alt Z. So now as I'm like, you know, if I go in here with my move brush and I can just hit Alt Z real quick, and I go ahead and project, I might need to crank that distance up a little bit. And again, if that dynamic's throwing you off, just turn it off. Now, as speaking of snapping to a surface, we do know that we can use dynamics to retopologize too. I have some videos of that. If you go to my YouTube channel, we've got some kind of some demo videos. It might be a little bit easier to see on my Earth Station page, the ZBrush Demos 2021. We can go through here and we're using like topology to go through here. You can snap shapes and use uh, dynamics to go ahead and snap to the underlying surface, just using those as live collision objects. You can even go through here and pull in an entire human, we'll go ahead and cover that too as well. But here you see a couple of different examples of using topology and dynamics. We just create an entire face here and just push that right along our geometry and I'll go ahead and use that as a collision surface and cloth transpose to kind of push that geo on there. And of course you can wiggle the geometry into place using dynamics as well, taking an entire different piece of topology and just using that cloth dynamics to uh, snap to an underlying live surface. But on a smaller scale, uh, if we go through here, we have our smooth brush. And like we mentioned before in the dynamic section of creating your own brushes, uh, would they use cloth simulation? You can go down here and you can choose under elasticity to uh, have simulation iterations on. So if you crank this up to 100, um, we'll hold down shift and crank simulations iterations up to 100. So now when you smooth, it'll go ahead and smooth and 
snap to any collision surface. Now we don't have a collision surface yet, so we got to go in here to Dynamics, the Dynamics menu, put it over here. We can say create me a new collision volume. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our inflate down to zero so the verts are as close as we can get. Oops. So now you hold down shift and smooth. Um, it, let's also turn off gravity. So as we're smoothing, you're gonna see, I can go through here and I can smooth verts around and it'll snap to the underlying surface. It may pull up just a bit. That's when I can go into my hotkey for project all or go over here and hit project all. That'll snap them all back down. Same thing with the move brush. You can go into your move brush or there is a B, C, V cloth move. So now if I use these with a the collision volume, you may be able to move around uh, verts and have it you know, try and snap to a surface. You can move around multiple verts using a brush size. Uh, and again, if it lifts off a little bit, just hit your projectile hotkey and you can just move these verts around or smooth these verts um, as needed. And then you know, hit your projectile button and uh, put those back. So just a couple more options for you while you're retopologizing using cloth dynamics, collision surfaces, and snap to surface with your Z modeler brush. Uh, you can get some pretty fast, quick results. And if you ever have anything in here, if we go back to our go back in here to our Z modeler brush, extrude edge, and snap to surface. Um, if you get any edges in here that are close, and for some reason the attraction didn't work. I mean, it's, it works pretty dang good, but you can also <laughs> see if I can actually do this. Uh, don't snap, maybe, and I'll use the move brush here. Uh, make that a little bit smaller. I can also go into my weld options. There's geometry, modified topology. There is a weld points. Uh, weld distance is set to one by default. Uh, so if you crank this up, you can eventually get uh, points to weld. Now if you crank it up too far, uh, some of these points in here that are close, like we go in here and say insert single edge loop over an edge here. And here you can see we have cloth simulations turned on to the Z modeler brush. I'm going to go down here to brush and turn that down to zero. So I can just insert an edge loop right here. So we have very close verts and then as I run uh, weld points it's going to snap some of these. So you may have some undesired results, but as long as your edges are pretty far apart and you have just little spaces in between, you can use that weld points uh, functionality as well. And we talked about this in the smooth brush, but just in case you missed that video, you can also go in here to B, C, or B, S, O, smooth cloth. And now when you hold down shift, you'll have smooth cloth. That'll allow you to smooth the surface and any open border edges as well. That's essentially, if you hold down shift, go to smooth brush modifier, setting that min connected to one. So if you go to my ArtStation page here, and you go to the ZBrush 2021 demos, you'll see uh, there's some cool stuff in here, but this one uh, goes over the retopology using simulation and the new ZModeler functionality. So we're going to kind of mix the ZModeler edge extrusion functions that we learned along with some cloth tricks to kind of see if we can't do some cool stuff. So like we did before, uh, if you go to BTO topology brush, we have X-Symmetry turned on. And again, if you just want to like draw, just start drawing geometry on your mesh here. You can just drop your draw size down to one, tap off, do a split mass points underneath your subtool split menu here, and you'll have topology ready to go. Anything in your scene that's visible can be uh, snapped. We're gonna go ahead into transparency mode, turn off ghost, and now we can go through here and we can just like extrude edge loop, make sure snap to surface is on, go to move mode, uh, hover over a point. What I mean by topology brush is the Z modeler brush, BZM. You can hover over a point and say move, snap to surface and then over, hover, over, hover over a face and then just do like do nothing. So now we can go through here and we can just start moving these into place and as we get towards the middle we'll go ahead and snap and then you can actually just turn over let's go over here to skin shader for so we can see it a little bit better and we can start extruding down like so and as you can see uh, we can come up with some pretty easy topology pretty quickly and also remember tap alt once to go through here and just drag an entire edge loop and again, the whole time uh, we're snapping to the surface. Another alternative to this is we can go in here, either a BI brush insert, insert primitives half. You can hit M and grab that single poly or just tap it up here. And you can also insert a single poly. Go ahead and turn off transparency. So we can insert uh, on that mesh and then we'll turn transparent back on. If you want to, you can control shift tap to isolate this one. We can go over here to geometry and we can hit divide. That'll go ahead and give us some more subdivisions. And you can also go through here through your Z modeler brush, switch over here to bevel, edge loop complete, and you can just drop some more topology in here. Now this new topology isn't gonna be snapped to the face. However, what you can do is you can go over here to project all, 
and let's crank up that distance a bit so that way it'll go ahead and project all the way to the face. I'm going to hit Control w to make these all into one poly group again and now we can go through here. You can also hold down shift and you can smooth. Um, if you want to smooth open border edges make sure you go to B -esh brush smooth cloth and that'll allow you to uh, smooth those open border edges. Of course if you're going to smooth and you don't have like a collision volume turned on using dynamics collision volume uh, just make sure every once in a while you hit project all or you assign a hotkey to that. Now you don't have to stick to uh, just using the edge extrusion like here I can go through here and I can say okay we'll switch back to extrude and then we can uh, you know tap alt once to go up one or tap alt to go here and do an ed entire edge row or hold down alt to go all the way around. Alternatively you can also hover over an edge and you can say like bridge edges and you can just go through here and just bridge these things manually so whatever is easier for you to do to get the job done again you can always go ahead and hit control W. Now if you wanted to start with a larger plane you can make a, a custom insert mesh brush. I have one uh, that's under alt E is if I go in here to brush there's an IMM base primitives and I got a bunch of just custom things in here like a plane and a plane mid so I can go down a midline go out of transparency mode. I can, so what that'll allow me to do if I alt, alt tap this head here and as I drag this mesh out you're going to see it automatically snaps. Uh, it's kind of a little bit hard to see. Let's make another one and we'll append it to this. So I'm going to go out of edit mode. Say always switch. Control N to clear my canvas. I'm going to go back out here to my tool palette. I'm just going to grab a plain 3D. We'll drag it out on our canvas. Go into edit mode. Uh, make poly mesh 3D. Go down here to geometry hit reconstruct and instead of just one down the middle let's say I want to put a whole blanket of quads down maybe this many so I'm gonna go ahead and say delete higher I'm gonna hit B to create insert mesh but first I'm gonna have my insert mesh base primitives uh, selected so I can go in here to create insert mesh and say append Say okay so now I have an extra polyplane uh, appended to my brush if I want to save this I can go up here to brush save as I can drop this into my C program files Pixelogic ZBrush 2021 Z brushes if I want to be able to load them up in the light box or I can go up here to Z startup brush presets and then if I save it in here every time I open up ZBrush it'll be an extra brush down here I can assign a hotkey to. So that's what I did with this IMM brush it's assigned to Alt E and it's just a custom insert mesh brush that I made. But like I said before if you want to go into the light box just go up here into brushes and then you can just select any custom brushes you have in here. You can throw it into the IMM folder or you can make a completely new folder uh, in that directory and you can always grab it from there. So now if we go back to our head here and remember we have modifiers projection strength up to 100. If this is down to zero it's just going to drag that plane right on the surface. It's going to be kind of out away from the surface. Projection strength up to 100 will allow you to kind of just kind of put that geometry right over that head, it'll already project to the underlying surface. We're going to go in here to Subtool, Split, Masked Points or Unmasked Points, doesn't really matter. So now we have our head here and we have our new head topology. If you want to merge that with our other head topology we were drawing, uh, we can just move this one with a bent arrow down so they're both next to each other. Then we just go down here to Merge Down, say OK. Go ahead and turn on, you can turn on solo mode if you just want to see these two. You can hit Control W to make them all one polygroup, or you can keep them all a separate polygroup and you can isolate this one if you want by Control Shift clicking it. Uh, but with both those now in one subtool in this head topology, we can turn transparency back on, and now we can use our Z modeler brush to again move these points around, or I can isolate this one and move these points independently, then Control Shift tap in my document to uh, bring that back. So then you can either bridge two edges or go back to your extrude edge. And now you can go ahead and pull these out. Let's tap Alt once just to kind of go one edge at a time here. And if you're getting a bunch of creasing on your edges and you don't want to see that, uh, you can just go down here to Geometry, Crease, Uncrease All, and that'll go ahead and leave uh, your creasing alone. So now we can go through here, and we've just basically appended this plane. We can tap Alt once to go ahead and drag an entire plane out. And then you can tap Alt and hold down Alt if you want to pull out an entire edge ring. So using the basics of your edge modeler, your edge extrude in Z modeler to do that kind of operation. Now you can take any polygon geometry and do that. So if you go up here to your comma key, go to your tool menu, you can grab a polysphere, 
hit comma key to go out of that. Let's take this polysphere, drop that down to subdivision level one, and then just keep reconstructing down until you're like even this level. Yeah, probably something nice and simple like this. Hold down control shift and then alt to delete or to visibility get rid of that back half here. You can go in here to geometry. Well, first let's hit delete higher so it's no subdivision levels. Go here to geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. Let's hit W to get our gizmo back and then we're just gonna Z scale this in that direction. So then we'll go hit B, go back to our IMM base primitives. Let's go ahead and turn on X symmetry. We can actually maybe move these in a little bit and then maybe scale this out a little bit. We can use this for like eyes or mouths or anything like that. So I'm just gonna hit B, grab our insert base, base primitives here. And if we wanna rename this one first, we can go through here and we can say orbit mesh or something like this. We can hit B, create insert mesh again, append. And then uh, you're probably gonna wanna save this brush over. So you can go in here to brush, save as. I already have this saved in my ZBrush 21 Z startup brush preset, so I can just save over this IMM base primitives, and then every time I load up ZBrush, I'll have my new meshes. So I'll go back to the head topology here. We can like go over the mouth. And if we have this mesh selected, if we go out of transparency mode, so it allows us to draw on any visible subtool, we can drag this out. We have projection strength up to 100, but it's not projecting to the mesh. In order to get that to work, remember you have to have the head topology selected. And then as you're dragging this out, it'll go ahead and snap to the underlying surface. But in this case, I'll just have the head topology selected. Transparency off. We'll drag our mesh out. We can go ahead and scale this mesh as needed using my gizmo here. And then what I can do is I can go over here to the dynamics menu. Let's crank this collision volume all the way up. Let's turn inflate all the way down we can turn off gravity, we don't really need that. I'm gonna hit W, uh, we're gonna go to B, T, C to go to transpose cloth, and now we can use that collision volume to wrap this geometry you're gonna see. As I have this geometry and I approach the collision volume, it's gonna collide with that collision surface and snap to that underlying surface here. So now, I mean, I can keep that collision volume on. If I control drag and then I hold down shift and we're in smooth cloth, and go in here to brush elasticity, turn up simulation iterations up to 100. So as I'm smoothing it, I'll go ahead and, you know, try and stick to that collision surface. And then every once in a while, I'll just go over here to geometry project all, make sure those are all conforming to my surface. So now I can go in here to transparency mode again, go to my Z modeler brush, BZM, or if you have a hotkey assigned to a custom topology brush that you've made using ZModeler, which we discussed in the earlier videos, now you can go through here and you can start making new topology. Now, of course, you can always go through here and uh, sometimes it's helpful just to do a quick mirror and weld. If you get little slivers in here, try doing a mirror across the X and then a mirror and weld. Or sometimes what you can do is you can just go through here, turn off X symmetry by tapping X on your keyboard, go in here to insert single edge loop, hold down Alt, and then do is do a quick uh, mirror and weld. Sometimes the cloth can kind of throw off. So we've got a little chunk in there. We'll set delete hidden. Geometry modified topology delete hidden. Uh, sometimes cloth can sometimes throw off uh, the symmetry a little bit here. And if you're having trouble getting these things to snap back, you just go into solo mode and use your move brush, or you can go over here to project all. And that'll go ahead and bring your mesh back. Go ahead and turn X symmetry back on. And then as we go ahead and rearrange these loops, we can go through here. We can put in a bevel edge loop complete if you want to like put a bevel line through here. We can even go through here. We can do a slice. So we can isolate this control shift click or let's go control shift select lasso this entire piece down here. Hold down control shift and go into slice. I'm going to put a slice right through here to cut that geometry. Control shift tap to bring everything else back. Do another geometry modified topology mirror and weld. And then I can say, go into my Z modeler brush. We can start moving these pieces around. We can put our edge back to extrude edge loop with snap surface. Like I said before, sometimes it's useful to have project all just assigned to a bound to a hotkey. And all that is is just hold down control alt, tap project all, assign a hotkey. So control alt, tap project all, assign a hotkey, I'll assign it like alt Z or something. And then all I have to do is hit alt Z uh, to go ahead and put that back. If you ever have any extra geometry accidentally, you can just switch this to 
face operation, just hover over face, spacebar, say delete, and then I'll turn this back to do nothing. And now through here we can go through and we can say extrude edge loop, we can tap alt once and then hold down alt, and we can pull out an entire poly loop. And again, sometimes if I'm not careful, I'll accidentally pull out edge geometry, so I'll just go to the back here and say delete a single poly here and here. And now I can go ahead and snap those together. And also remember you can hover over an edge, switch this over to insert edge loop. You can always go through and insert as many edge loops as you want. Again, I go back in here with my smooth brush. It has the collision volume already on there. I can snap that back to my surface and uh, I'm good to go.